And on Sunday, thousands of people will converge on downtown Toronto for World Pride's main attraction, the Pride Parade. But Saturday had its share of big events also, kicking off with a Pride and Remembrance Run. Ontario Premier Kathleen Wynne was among those who took part in that run. The 5K event aims to celebrate community and volunteerism. More than 1,000 people took part. Those participants are raising money for a number of LGBTQ charities. The goal was to raise $100,000. Well, unlike celibacy, which is a choice not to have sex, asexuality is a sexual orientation defined as a lack of sexual attraction. Now, due to the growing interest and awareness of asexuality, World Pride hosted an international asexuality conference in Toronto Saturday. Joining us now from Toronto is Julie Sandra Decker. She's an asexuality awareness activist and also the author of Invisible Orientation. Julie, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Julie, a big conference regarding asexuality. Tell us a little bit about this conference. It was really the first conference of this size that had a whole bunch of asexual people from all around the world uh, coming together to talk about this subject. And we had a very diverse population of people from so many different countries, from so many different walks of life, just to talk about this subject for the first time. So what is the, the most common misconception about someone who is asexual? It depends on who you are, but for the most, uh, the most popular reason that I've personally heard is you haven't met the right person yet. And why do you say that? Mm, they're just so certain that there's someone for everyone and that this is some kind of phase or it's a case of immaturity, something like that. But uh, for most of us, it's just the way that we experience attraction to no one. Have you ever seen a case where it has been, uh, has been a phase? Um, I wouldn't phrase it as a phase. I would say some people are sexually fluid, and then some other people find out that they were using a label that no longer describes them. So they find a more uh, appropriate label for themselves maybe later in life when they feel differently about sex. So you had the big conference today. I mean, how do you see asexuality fitting into the LGBTQ uh, movement and, and the community? Well, we've been included more frequently in LGBT-related events uh, in recent years, and uh, we are we are fighting similar battles even in situations where they're not exactly the same, because um, the, the the straight world tends to view both LGBT people and asexual people, and especially people who are both. Um, with uh, an air of, uh, you're a mystery to me, I don't understand you, or I uh, have uh, negative opinions of you. So we have a lot of the same goals and a lot of the same problems. Does asexuality pose a problem for, for youth, kids, uh, you know, going through puberty, they're in high school, they're confused, they have issues. Is, is, it, a real, is it a real problem for, for kids? I think it's very common when everybody else around you is starting to feel attractions to whoever they're attracted to and you're an asexual person who is not experiencing that. Not only do you feel left out from an experience that everyone else is enjoying, but you are also frequently told that you can't possibly be asexual and you're told to just wait because it will, you will mature later in your life. And that's not necessarily true because many of us know we're asexual right around the same time that everyone else is figuring out that they're not. All right, good stuff. Julie Sandra Decker, author of The Invisible Orientation. Julie, thanks a lot for this. Thank you.